Greetings citizens of the world. We are anonymous. The election of Donald Trump has sent millions of people pouring out onto the streets to protest a man they think is a racist, misogynist, xenophobic bully who will destroy US democracy in his quest to establish himself as supreme fascist ruler of the country. Maybe they're right. Maybe Trump is a fascist who will destroy America. But where were these people when Obama was bombing wedding parties in Kandahar, or training jihadist militants to fight in Syria, or abetting NATO's destructive onslaught on Libya, or plunging Ukraine into fratricidal warfare, or collecting the phone records of innocent Americans, or deporting hundreds of thousands of undocumented workers, or force-feeding prisoners at Gitmo, or providing bombs and aircraft to the Saudis to continue their genocidal war against Yemen. Where were they? They were asleep, weren't they? Because liberals always sleep when their man is in office, particularly if their man is a smooth-talking cosmopolitan snake charmer like Obama who croons about personal freedom and democracy while unleashing the most unspeakable violence on civilians across the Middle East and Central Asia. These are the steps that we must take. There are plenty of steps we can take right now, right now to start getting our economy back on track. To help create jobs and grow this economy. If we are going to deal with our dependence on foreign oil, if we're going to end our dependence on foreign oil, we'll recruit an army of new teachers. I want to recruit an army of new teachers. Make college affordable. Make college more affordable. And repair our crumbling roads and bridges. We've got crumbling roads and bridges. Tonight, more Americans are out of work. we still got friends out there and family who are looking for work. It's in a time when so many people are struggling to keep up. A moment when so many people are still struggling. If you are willing to work with me, if you're willing to work even harder in this election, then I promise you, then I promise you, I promise you change will come. The United States has been at war for eight straight years under Obama. And during that time, there hasn't been one sizable anti-war march, demonstration or protest. Nothing. No one seems to care when an articulate biracial mandarin kills mostly people of color, but when a brash and outspoken real estate magnate takes over the reins of power, then watch out because here come the protesters, all three million of them. Can we agree that there is at least the appearance of hypocrisy here? If Hillary had won, the drone strikes would have continued. The wars would have continued. The spying would continue. Whistleblowers would continue being prosecuted and hunted down. And minorities would continue bearing the brunt of these policies, both in the US and across the world. The difference is that in such a scenario, Democrats, if the last eight years are any indication, would remain silent, as they did under Obama, offering bare minimum concern and vilifying anyone attacking their beloved president as some sort of hater. Cities across the US would remain free of protests. And for another four eight years, Democrats would continue doing absolutely nothing to end the same horrifying policies now promoted by a Republican. How many of the 800,000 protesters who marched on Sunday would have flown to Washington to express their contempt for would-be President Hillary Clinton? Zero, I'd wager, and yet it's Hillary who wanted to implement the no-fly zones in Syria that would have put Washington in direct confrontation with Moscow. Just like it was Hillary who wanted to teach Putin a thing or two in Ukraine. But is that what the people want? Would people prefer to be led into World War III by a bona fide champion of liberal values than concede the post to a brassy billionaire who wants to find common ground on fighting ISIS with his Russian counterpart? It seems like a no-brainer to me. And it's not like we don't know who is responsible for the killing in Syria either. We do. Barack Obama and his coterie of bloodthirsty friends in the political establishment are entirely responsible. These are the people who funded, armed and trained the Salafist maniacs that have decimated the country and created millions of refugees that are now tearing apart the EU. That's right, the spillover from America's not-so-covert operation is ripping the EU to shreds. It's just another unfortunate side effect of Obama's bloody Syrian debacle. As journalist Margaret Kimberly says in a recent post at the Black Agenda report, all of the casualties, the sieges, 
the hunger and the frantic search for refuge can be placed at America's feet. Amen to that. All the violence can be traced back to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, home of Barack Hussein Obama, Nobel Peace Prize winner. What a joke. Supporters of Barack Obama, and liberals in general, are disingenuous frauds. They had no issues protesting the likes of the amoral warmongering George W. Bush or the racist xenophobe, Donald J. Trump. However when it comes to Barack Obama they can find no reason to protest his mass murdering escapades. Obama supporters were recently nostalgic and teary eyed after he gave his last major speech as President of the United States, yet can find little reason to shed tears over the masses of civilians who were destroyed directly as a result of Obama's policies. Where were the emotions and tears when men? Women and children were getting blown to bits by USA drone attacks, indiscriminate airstrikes and bombs. Those who protested the racist and xenophobic Trump, but not Obama or Clinton, are nothing more than disingenuous frauds and amoral cowards. As Obama exits the White House, never forget his destructive imperialist legacy. Let's be honest, Obama got a pass from his supporters, strictly because of appearances, because he looked and sounded like a thoroughly reasonable bloke who only acted on the loftiest of principles. Obama was hailed as a moral giant, a political rock star, a leader among leaders. But it was all fake, all makeup and glitz behind which operated the vicious national security state extending its tentacles around the world toppling regimes wherever it went, and leaving anarchy and destruction in its wake. Isn't this Obama's real legacy when you strip away the sweeping hand gestures and pompous rhetoric? Of course it is. But Trump won't have that advantage. Will he? Trump is not a public relations invention upon which heartsick liberals pin their highest hopes. Trump is Trump warts and all, the proverbial bull in the china shop. That's not to say Trump won't be a lousy president. Judging by the Wall Street cutthroats and hard-edged military men he's surrounded himself with, he probably will be. But the American people are no longer asleep, so there's going to be limits to what he can hope to achieve. So the question is, how should one approach the Trump presidency? Should we denounce him as a fascist before he ever sets foot in the Oval Office? Should we deny his legitimacy even though he was elected via a process we have honored for over 200 years? Should we launch impeachment proceedings before he's done anything that would warrant his removal from office? The current danger for Democrats and progressives is that, by bashing everything that Trump says and does, they will further alienate the white working class voters who became his base and will push away anti-war activists. There is a risk that the left will trade places with the right on the question of war and peace, with Democrats and progressives associating themselves with Hillary Clinton's support for endless war in the Middle East, the political machinations of the CIA, and a new Cold War with Russia, essentially moving into an alliance with the military, and intelligence, industrial complex. Many populists already view the National Democrats as elitists disdainful of the working class, promoters of harmful free trade deals, and internationalists represented by the billionaires at the glitzy annual confab in Davos, Switzerland. If, in a rush to demonize and impeach President Trump, Democrats and progressives solidify support for wars of choice in the Middle East, a new Cold War with Russia and a Davos-style elitism, they could further alienate many people who might otherwise be their allies. In other words, selectivity in opposing and criticizing Trump, where he rightly deserves it, rather than opportunism in rejecting everything that Trump says might make more sense. A movement built entirely on destroying Trump could drop Democrats and progressives into some politically destructive traps. We are anonymous.